so a very good afternoon to you all so on the onset i wish you all <coughs> on the first national space day of india so i welcome you to the session so <coughs> today we will discuss about uh, python for deep learning models we will see how do we create deep learning models using python before going to that i will just because <coughs> i will just introduce you or actually i think my some of the contents which i am going to uh, uh, tell now maybe it might be overlapping with some of the previous speakers so but just for the sake of completion i i will just touch upon the basics of uh, deep learning and uh, the lecture is divided basically into two parts so in the first half i will be talking about the basics of this deep learning and ai machine learning and deep learning and in the second part we will see how do we uh, make these uh, models in action right so how do we make these actions using python programming language so here i am assuming that you have some basic knowledge of python programming so actually without that it will be quite difficult to follow it up so uh, my basic assumption here is that you all know the basics of python programming language right so this is what i will be covering over the the course so over the lecture actually so we will just i will just uh, briefly touch upon the ai ml and dl that might overlap with some previous lectures then uh, we will discuss about some basic python libraries or frameworks which gen people generally use for uh, making these deep learning models then specifically we will use one of the frameworks called pytorch so i'll be just uh, a brief introduce you to pytorch and in the second half we will see how do we create these deep learning models in really how does that uh, neural networks look like in pytorch and because this course was all about geospatial data so briefly i will just touch upon geospatial data and we will see how do we use this uh, deep learning for uh, uh, geospatial data so before going to the details so we'll there is so much hype around artificial intelligence so we'll start with what is called intelligence right so intelligence generally if we loosely intelligence can loosely be defined as the capability to, to obtain knowledge and skills and to apply those skills to various situations without any specific supervision right that's what we call intelligence <clears throat> so like we need not to be programmed specifically for some for some specific task so intelligence means when we learn or our cap our capability to learn and acquire knowledge and skills from our surroundings and apply those automatically without any supervision to any specific or new problem which we encounter in our life so that what we call intelligence because of because at, before uh, advent of machine learning these capabilities were were not up with the machine so uh, right so that was specific to human so intelligence is generally is connected to some called some kind of abstract thinking or self awareness but generally we cannot define intelligence formally so if we uh, say intelligence is made up of reasoning like if you have the capability of reasoning learning or some problem solving skills making perceptions about something and linguist linguistic intelligence if a person or machine is generally if contains these attributes then we say that the person or machine is intelligent so uh, that human beings have been innate intelligence defined as the intelligence that governs every activity in our body so our as a human we have natural intelligence <coughs> right so now the term comes what is artificial intelligence this is intelligence then uh, john mccarthy has given a definition like it's the science and engineering of making intelligent machines especially intelligent computer programs is all about is all called artificial intelligence like making a machine which has the cognitive uh, 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 it has the uh, uh, cognitive ability of a human being is what we call artificial or intelligent machine right so the fundamental premise of ai is to create machines that can intelligently think in the same or similar way the humans think so that what we call if a machine can mimic that behavior that we call that the machine is an intelligent machine and artificial intelligence is all about making a machine which can mimic the human behavior right so it is designed to acquire knowledge or awareness from its environment its circumstances and entities just by learning so if you can make like the then ai is concerned about making a machine which can acquire knowledge from its environment circumstances and maybe uh, by interacting with humans around around this 
Right, so artificial intelligence is a an scientific discipline that studies how can we make computers exhibit the intelligence. So, now the question becomes how do we say that the machine is <coughs> intelligent. So, there was Alan Turing devised a test called a uh, Turing test. So, that is taken as a benchmark for uh, deciding whether a machine is intelligent or not. So, in that in this case what happens there will be a person who does not he will be interacting with uh, someone at the background. So, but he does not know whether he is interacting with a machine or a human being. So, if the uh, person is not able to distinguish whether he is calling he is interacting with in, or inter interrogating a machine or a human. So, like if uh, the person cannot uh, infer that he is interacting with a machine. So, if the machine of that level what we call uh, that we can say that the machine we say that the machine has passed the Turing test of intelligence. So, if a human is not able to distinguish bit whether he, uh, while talking to that machine, whether he is talking to a machine or a human being. So, in that case we can we say that the machine is intelligent machine. So, now uh, these there are three terms called artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning. Right. So, artificial intelligence is a broader umbrella. Right. So, artificial in intelligence is all about making a computer program or a machine which has the cognitive level of a human being right so that what we call and uh, call artificial intelligence like right? writing such programs or making such machines which have the cognitive ability as of a human so that the, uh, this entire thing we call artificial intelligence now there can be multiple ways of making such intelligent program or intelligent machine right so artificial intelligence is the entire spectrum entire spectrum and there can be multiple ways for uh, making such an intelligent program, such an intelligent uh, program or a machine. Like you can write a very complex program with a different set of rules that can mimic a human behavior. So that also will that will call by artificial intelligence. But there is a subset of artificial intelligence which is which is uh, one of the most successful technique in creating artificial intelligence is what we call machine learning. So, in machine learning instead we do not write a very intelligent program. So, we write program which learns from some previous data. So, as, uh, what you can say that uh, a branch of artificial intelligence which is concerned or which, uh, which uh, makes machine intelligent by learning from some past data. So, it learns from the past data, it acquires some knowledge from that past data and applies that for the specific problem which it is handling. So, this what is so a machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence which is which acquires or uh, gains intelligence by learning from the past data. So, this is one of the most successful technique. Then there is a subset of machine learning called deep learning right. So, deep learning is also uh, uh, a uh, uh, artificial intelligence learning artificial intelligence technique which learns from the past data but is learning in different. So, a machine learning may be some statistical or some other kind of technique, but deep learning is a subset of uh, machine learning which, al which is also learning from the past data, but it uh, uses something called deep uh, neural networks for learning. So, uh, artificial intelligence is a broader term and inside uh, there is a subset of artificial intelligence, intelligence what we call machine learning which is learning from the previous data. So, the learning may be in the form of some statistical similarities or some kind of uh, based on some statistics and a subset of machine learning where we use artificial neural networks is called deep learning. So, if you see the entire spectrum of AI, ML and DL in a single frame, so artificial intelligence involves like we can case ab ability to sense, reason, engage and learn. So, it involves computer vision like natural language processing, voice recognition, robotics and motion and so on right. <coughs> and machine learning basically unsupervised learning. So, because machine learning is a specific subset of artificial intelligence where we uh, make a machine intelligent by learning from the past data. So, machine learning is most basically like you can say uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, then reinforcement learning or something like that right. So, then uh, deep learning is ability to learn by connecting multiple uh, layer together. Uh, this, is, this is another subset of a machine learning where we are learning from the past data, but our learning is not based on some statistical learning. So, it is based on some neural networks. So, what all we can do with machine learning algorithms? 
so machine learning algorithm can be used for predicting a target category so we can use machine learning for a uh, binary classification or multi class classification we can uh, use machine learning for finding unusual data points like if you have a lot of data points like we have the uh, uh, all credit card transactions taking place every day so from that we can we with the help of machine learning we can identify uh, the most probable fake transactions so right so we can uh, use machine learning for finding anomaly you can for anomaly detection we can use uh, machine learning for predicting some like instead of uh, classification we can even similarly we can use mach machine learning or deep learning for predicting continuous values in the form of regression then we can use machine learning for seeing how values change over the time right like we can uh, see the pattern or we can infer pattern from the time series data and use it for inferring future values right so these are the some things where machine learning can be used or uh, all of the machine learning algorithms fit into like may, maybe either they will be using uh, they will be doing classification or regression so basically basically these two tasks what generally machine learning algorithms do is classification or uh, regression so there these are some applications where uh, deep learning can be used in geospatial domain like this can be used for automatic uh, building uh, damage assessment from the satellite imagery or uh, <coughs> these can be used for land cover mapping if you do these things manually it's quite difficult and uh, if you are like uh, for a sim uh, sim single image or small area it can be done manually but if you want to do it as at scale which is humanly not possible so deep learning comes to our rescue for handling such cases it can be used for glacier mapping and glacier lake monitoring renewable energy mapping and all right so whatever we can do manually uh, with manual stuff so, so all the things can be done automatically using deep learning so uh, these are some machine learning techniques i think in the previous lectures must have been discussed in detail so machine learning techniques we can just generally classify into say unsupervised supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so what happens in case of supervised learning like suppose here here are, uh, there are two images like the images of cats and dogs in the case of supervised learning like we have some some many images of cats and dogs and with every image we have a label also attached to that so we train our model showing them different images of different images and with an associated label as well like you can say that to the machine that this is the image of dog and this is the image of cat so we show such uh, uh, many such images to the uh, machine and after that machine learns like this this if image has such these kinds of feature so this may be a dog and if it has like whiskers and sharp ears so then we can say that it may be a cat right so this way Uh, machine tries to uh, machine learns how to associate these features with the label so this is what we call supervised learning and in case of unsupervised learning we don't give uh, the label to the label uh, we, we, we just give the data we don't give the label attached to that data like we will be showing a lot of uh, images of cats and dogs but we will not tell the computer that this is the image of dog or this is the image of cat so what computer does or unsupervised learning does so it tries to group together like if it, it will just try to group them based on some similarity like it, it may try to group the images all the images of dogs images looking like dog in a group and all the images looking like cat in an another group then with the help of a manual expert we say that these are the dogs and these are the cats right so unsupervised learning is all about grouping together different objects based on some kind of similarity so another uh, kind of learning is called reinforcement learning so in case of reinforcement learning like if you say the same so we show different images to the computer like maybe different images of, of dogs and cats so if uh, the if computer says like or the model says um, correctly like if you show it an image of dog and it say, it replies that dog only then we reward it and if we, if we if we say the image of dog and it says cat then we just punish it so this way we keep on training the images so the, with this the model learns that whenever he is saying like image with images has these features and he be saying dog then it is getting rewarded and if uh, it is saying wrongly then it is getting punished so this way computer learns this what we call uh, sub semi supervised learning or reinforcement reinforcement learning like if for positive thing if the model identifies something positively we reward it otherwise we punish it this is called reinforcement learning so this was all about this now uh, we will see as we said that deep learning is a subset of 
मशीन लर्निंग विच यूजेज आर्टिफिशियल न्यूरल नेटवर्क और डीप न्यूरल नेटवर्क फॉर लर्निंग सो नाउ विल डिस्कस अबाउट बेसिक अबाउट सो दिस इज अ टिपिकल मॉडल ऑफ अ न्यूरोन एज वी से दैट आवर ब्रेन कंसिस्ट ऑफ न्यूरल सेल्स लाइक आवर दिस इज अ थ्योरी ऑफ हाउ आवर ब्रेन वर्क सो आवर ब्रेन कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ न्यूरल कंसिस्ट ऑफ न्यूरल सेल्स सो एवरी न्यूरल सेल सो दे इन आवर ब्रेन वी हैव सच बिलियंस ऑफ सच न्यूरोन्स कनेक्टेड इंटरकनेक्टेड टूगेदर सो दे कलेक्टिवली वर्क एंड मेक अवर कॉग्निशन सो ईच एंड एट द बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक ऑफ अवर माइंड इज वट वी कॉल्ड अ न्यूरोन और न्यूरल सेल सो एवरी न्यूरल सेल इज हैविंग मल्टीपल इनपुट्स एंड वन आउटपुट राइट सो एक्सॉन एंड डेंडोडाइट्स सो इट हैज इनपुट्स दैट वी कॉल वी कॉल एक्सॉन्स एंड आउटपुट and there it can have multiple inputs and output will be a single output so that what we call dendrite so axons and dendrites can conduct electrical signals like they receive input signals uh, uh, from the different sources or maybe from the previous neurons and they do some processing and finally they conduct some electrical signals so connection between axons and dendrites can exhibit different degrees of conductivity depending on what input signals are received at the axons based on that the conductivity of that neuron cell will be decided so <coughs> so now suppose if you wish to uh, represent the model of neuron what has been given mathematically so you can say that neuron is a single cell which receives input signals from different sources and with every signal there is a weight associated with every signal and <coughs> the neuron uh, <coughs> do the summation of all these input multiplied by their weight like you can say that xi multiplied by wi then this <coughs> so if the summation of all these inputs multiplied by their weights is above certain threshold so that that threshold we can decide so depend if, if it is above certain threshold then we can, we say that this particular neuron has fired or otherwise we say that this particular neuron has not fired for this particular set of inputs right so this is a mathematical model of a neuron a neuron this is a simple mathematical model here we have multi, multi the neuron receives multiple inputs so these inputs may come from previous neuron or somewhere else so and then with every input there will be a weight associated with that so the neuron will do the like every input it will it will multiply by the weight of that input and do the summation of those inputs together and that <coughs> so if the summation of that input is above certain threshold then we say that the the neuron has fired otherwise say that the neuron has not fired so this is uh, the one of the f- earliest uh, neural network so one of the first attempt to implement something similar to a uh, modern neural network was done by frank rosenblatt from the cornell aeronautical uh, laboratory in 1957 so it was a hardware implementation they he called it mark 1 so it was basically designed to recognize some primitive geometric shapes such as triangles squares and rectangles right so to input to that a particular neuron was an image represented by 20 by 20 photo cell arrays so input to that neuron so the, it was 400 inputs were there to that neuron so a simple network contained one neuron so or that they were calling thresholding logic unit so the new network weights so like as these weights needs to be adjusted so that it can identify the uh, figure correctly so these were done manually so here you can see that this was one of the like um, this is the this was the first what do you say artificial neural network implemented in hardware so this is what we discussed about uh, previously this is the mathematical model of a neuron so this is a neur- so these are all inputs and every input has an weight associated with that so a neuron does a summation of all these inputs then it may apply a non linearity to that uh, to that output and then it generates an output so uh, right if the output is above like in the in the cases of neuron it was like if output is above certain threshold there was no activation function applied to that then we say that the output of the neuron was 1 or 0 it was a binary actually but in case of perceptron uh, we have we apply an Uh, activation function to the summation and output of the, that activation function is used further right so this is the uh, uh, forward model of propagation so the previous picture which i showed was 
not uh, completely correct so <coughs> in that if we add we add an uh, we add an bias to output so that the output can be shifted to plus minus so when we add <coughs> so now the model of neuron uh, this is this what we call a perceptron so the model of percep perceptron is like this we have it has a, uh, it has multiple inputs and weights associated to that so it will do a summation of all weights multiplied by the uh, multiplied by uh, the inputs then it adds a bias to that so what w0 here is called a bias actually these all slides i have taken from this source <coughs> w0 then it ac applies an activation function to that summation plus bias bias so that is produced as an output of the neuron Right. So once, so then now, now let us see what is the, <coughs> the use of this activation functions. So if there is no activation function in the neural network, so the neural network is just a, a linear. It cannot learn non non linear features like the entire. Like suppose if you make instead of one neuron, if you make a network of maybe ten or hundred neurons, so these entire hundred layers can just be represent can be replaced with a single uh, 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 neuron so because single weight like because it is not learning any non linearity so all are linear functions so for learning non for bringing non linearity to our model we attach this activation function so there are many activation functions which bring in non linearity so one of the most uh, used activation function is what we call sigmoid function so a sigmoid function squashes the output of a neuron in the range 0 to 1 so it is Uh, like similar to what we say probability so probability of something also is range ranges from the 0 to 1 right so the, the neuron the, so the sigmoid activation function squashes the output of a neuron in the range 0 to 1 so this is like uh, importance of activation function if if our uh, neural network if doesn't contain any activation any activation function so it can it is just a linear function so it can like here if you can see this these are some data points like red and uh, green data points so uh, we cannot draw a linear line which can segregate these two data points from together from each other right so this is a decision boundary so there can so if the, if our, in real world we find the data set like this so these are two attributes of our data set maybe x1 and x2 so we cannot we cannot draw a single line which can distinguish between these red and blue points so we need a line like this a non linear like line like this so for uh, doing classifications like this or uh, for uh, bringing non linearity to our model we need activation functions right so this is an example of a neuron like here you can see that this is what we can say this is a learned neuron so it has attached some weights like it has given weight 3 to input x1 and weight minus 2 to input x2 so like this <coughs> so like let's see that what does this particular neuron do right <coughs> so this like this is a learned neuron we can say that this like artificial intelligence is all about learning these weights and biases so that our uh, neuron can <coughs> like uh, artificial in intelligence or learning is all about learning these weights and biases appropriately so that the neuron produces correct output for the given inputs but this is so here we are assuming that this neuron has already been trained and it has decided that to input x1 it, it must give weight 3 and to the input x2 it should give give weight minus 2 now let's try to see how does this <coughs> what does this particular neuron is going to do right so here we have w0 or bias is 1 and our weights are 3 and minus 2 this is a vector so input Uh, has the weight three and output uh, or second uh, input has x two has weight minus two right now if we apply this w zero plus x transpose w x two this is if we have uh, this is uh, vector multiplication so if we write like this x one and x two because we are doing x one multiplied by three and x two we are multiplying by two so now if I write like this so this is the the, the neuron is doing like y cap is equal to we are applying activation function 1 plus 3x1 minus 3x2 right so this can be just represented as a line in our two dimensional matrix right so uh, this neuron is what it is doing so this is a decision boundary so um, so if you write 1 
So whatever equation we got here, from here one plus three x one minus three x two. If you draw this as a line on our two-dimensional plane, and zero, so zero. If we equate it equal to zero, that will be our decision boundary. So what this neuron is doing here, this is this has a decision boundary. So it is segregating our entire two-dimensional <coughs> space into two se two sections, maybe. This and this, right? So this is distinguishing the point between these two and this. So this I learned that. Now suppose if we give uh, a new uh, new feed, new uh, new uh, samples comes to it with the input features with value minus one and minus two. So if we by this we can decide that to which class this particular uh, new input fits to that, right? So this uh, this sim simple neuron is a classifier which is classifying. Uh, this is a classifier based on these uh, that is given these uh, weights to these inputs and it specifies whether this particular input falls into this class or this class right so this is like this is x segregating into two different classes so one of the problem with this uh, single neuron was that these single neurons are good work like there was a paper came which proved that the single perceptron cannot learn or classify inseparable data inseparable data data sets linearly inseparable data sets right so as a single neuron is good for like it can it can uh, uh, segregate if the data sets are linearly separable then single neuron can solve the problem but real world data sets will not be all data set will not be linearly inseparable so there was a paper which proved that these linear uh, uh, single neuron cannot uh, do uh, cannot uh, cannot learn or uh, or cannot learn to classify linearly inseparable data set so this i think this led to the uh, winters in ai uh, term we called so we need a so <coughs> we need a network of perceptron or a neural net, a network of perceptron which are connected together if you want to learn or uh, learn or class, learn to classify how to classify linearly inseparable data sets so arbitrary depth or width may be needed like but any but neurons with an arbitrary depth can segregate all in separate linearly inseparable data sets as well so uh, multi uh, layer so if you say multi layer perceptron or neural network has an input layer uh, and one or more hidden layers and an output layer so these neural networks can approximate any non linear function so they can uh, approximate any non linear function so uh, right so for approximating any non linear function we need a network of neural net neural uh, neurons Right, so if a neural network can be as simple as with a, a neural network with a single layer, or if there are more than or multiple layers uh, of neurons in a, a neural network, so then we call those deep neural networks. Right, so if you these are the anatomy, if we say this is the in, this is the red color shown in the red color is an input layer where we will be giving giving the inputs, and these are multiple hidden layers. So if <coughs> input of the previous layer is going to the every neuron in the next layer so then the, the layer we call fully connected layer so right these are all the hidden four this this particular deep neural network has one input layer four hidden layers and an output layer which is producing four outputs so one of the important concept here is actually uh, deep learning is all supervised learning so one important concept come, comes the loss function right so in the case of supervised learning as we have discussed previously that we have a data set plus their associated output right so what a neural network is learning neural network is appro appro approximating the function how do we associate this input to these output like how these by uh, how by how varying by how, <coughs> by varying how much these weights across different networks how these inputs can be mapped to the output so loss function like here we can say that these are our input features like this our input has two features maybe and there are these are so many training samples maybe uh, millions of training samples right and we have their corresponding outputs like if the input features are 4 and 5 the output of this should be 1 if the features are 2 and 1 the output should be 0 5 and 8 output should be 1 right so uh, once we give these inputs to our trained neural network or when we start training of our neural network it produces some output right for input 4 and 5 it might give the output has 0.1 right but the actual output may be 1 <coughs> so loss function is like over the all input functions what is the deviation between actual output for the given set of inputs 
and the output produced by the model this is what we call the loss function so that in the network in while training the neural network we try to minimize this loss like loss the difference between the output actual output and the output produced by the model so optimizing this loss so that we reach to a st state where the output is minimum is what we all about training the neural network this is how does a neural network work right so initially we have so so this is all about this is a uh, neural network is just a uh, supervised learning so here our input may be our an image right so like this is an image of cat so here we the output may be like suppose this is we are uh, doing uh, using a one one hot uh, vector encoding so like this is a one hot so here this is that if an image is shown as cat so this output should it should produce Uh, this uh, as one uh, output one right so we will uh, give the input to our neural network right so initially the weights and biases of uh, or different layers will be the random right so uh, the model will produce an output we say we say that y hat we know the actual ground truth that whether this is the image of cat or dog right so then we will compare the what output produce those so these com comparison needs to made to be made in terms of numerical values right so uh, the out, um, uh, model produces some output and with the help of loss function we calculate how how much they differ right how how much this uh, the output produced by the model differs with the uh, ground truth right so this what we called loss and we then we calculate the gradients and with the help of gradient we try to adjust the weights and biases of different layers so that we get the output which is nearer to the actual value right so uh, this the, this is how the training of neural networks one uh, neural network this is how a neural network gets trained so we give it an input so it produces an output corresponding to that given inputs right so then we compare the output produced by the network with the ground truth right so based on then uh, using an algorithm called back propagation and gradient descent we adjust the weights and biases of uh, different layers of our neural network so that uh, the output produced by the network is similar to the ground truth that we do for the all training samples given to us so uh, over the different uh, over the, this training loop these weights and adjust uh, biases gets adjusted to minimize this uh, loss function right uh, so there is another kind of neural network what we call convolution neural network so convolution neural networks are specifically designed for computer vision jobs like these work as like how do we uh, identify that this is a face right so we just took look for certain patterns like eyes nose eyes and nose and uh, shape of forehead and so on like right? so these are called the features of a face right so as a, our brain has, uh, looks for these features and tries to classify whether this is a face or not so similar to our uh, this there are convolution neural networks which are used in so convolution neural, uh, neural networks are basically used for image image recognition so they have these uh, so they try to uh, identify these features automatically from our image while training they try to extract these features automatically from the given set of images so the the features may be very low level features like edges then from these edges then it tries to learn the mid level features like ears nose and all then when when it combine these mid level features together it may try to construct or identify high level features like faces right so in computer vision convolutional neural networks are used for image recognition or image classification whatever you so so these are some uh, popular cnn architecture so this these are some popular cnn ar architectures so once we give an image so there will be convolution filters so initially uh, there will be very less number of features in that so if you generally see any a typical architecture of a convolutional neural, neural network so an input image is given so initially there will be very less filters or very less features it will try because low level feature will be very less maybe edges edges only we just trying to identify so initially the features will be less and spatial dimension will be more in the next layer what we will do we will reduce the spatial dimension and increase the number of features or convolution filters so this way we keep on increasing like we just increase the number of feature and reduce it dimensionally especially the special dimension we keep on reducing and finally we will be connecting it through some fully connected layers 
and produce an output like classification or whatever we want to do so these are so this is what we call pyramid architecture of uh, scns the pyramid architecture because initially we have we will have high spatial dimension then and low number of uh, feature maps then we will reduce the spatial dimension but increase the features right from the low level features we will just try to try to create higher level of feature and more number of features and these are most popular and successful architecture of cnn so this is one of the uh, lnet 5 architecture this which we will be implementing our in our practical right so now uh, if we discuss about various tools or we'll be basically talking about uh, open source tools uh, in the python are which are available for deep learning and framework so like if you learn numpy scipy scikit learn xgboost tensorflow keras pytorch stats model cafe open cv auto ml so these are different uh, deep learning or or machine learning models which are available in python open source so you can just uh, search on the internet and you get a lot of material on this so scikit learn is one of the most popular and powerful and versatile open open source library for machine learning so it has all things like supervised learning and supervised learning Uh, SVM everything is implemented in Scikit Learn. You can this is one of the easiest libraries to get started with. Then TensorFlow is one of the uh, is an open source framework that is that has gained popularity due to scalability and use. It is it has been it was developed by Google Brain Google Brain team. So TensorFlow uses tensors to represent data, <coughs> right? And uh, you can uh, know more. Also TensorFlow is one of the like if you are uh, going to develop for production model, you can use TensorFlow. and suppose if you are if you want to go specifically for geospatial uh, if you want to use uh, deep learning geospatial domain there are multiple libraries so one of them is torch geo so you can explore torch geo also it can be used for land cover classification object detection change detection disaster response monitoring urban planning like whatever 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 you can uh, use geospatial data so same thing you can uh, implement those models for doing that particular task using Uh, open torch view then there is another called eo learn so eo learn also act as a bridge between earth observation and remote sensing field so eo learn also you can actually uh, uh, it can help you bringing the geospatial data in a format that is easily ingestible in deep learning models so eo, EO learn also you can explore because because of the paucity of time i am not able to explain to more of this so one of the popular tool is uh, uh, raster vision raster vision also is an open source python library and framework actually it is both of a framework as well as library for building uh, deep learning models it can be used for uh, con deep learning on satellite image forecasting rip currents like whatever you can use with uh, deep learning you can use uh, raster vision also for all these tasks so like it uh, automatically it, it supports object detection or classification segmentation right so all so geospatial data like what is geospatial data so you can say that geospatial uh, data is a information that describes objects events or features with location on or near the surface of earth so that what we call geospatial data so geospatial data can be represented in two formats one we call raster another we what one we call vector format so we will be today's demonstration i will be just concentrating on the raster format or what we call image so uh, for this demonstration demonstration we will be using one of the most popular uh, deep learning framework that is pytorch so pytorch is an excellent open source platform it has been developed by meta's ai research team it is an open source deep learning framework it supports cpu and gpu computations it enables users to create dy dynamic computational graphs i think the dynamic computational graphs used in Uh, tensorflow are static but uh, pytorch supports dynamic computation graphs it supports distributed training across multiple gpus if you have large data sets on which you want to train your model and if you for that if you need multiple gpus then uh, pytorch supports multiple gpu training then pytorch is well supported on all major cloud computing platforms if you are going to use google colab pytorch comes auto pre installed in the google colab So I'll be using Google Colab for today's demonstration. So these are the key capabilities. It is production ready and it supports distributed training. It has robust ecosystem. There are lot more other libraries, a full ecosystem of tools and libraries extending the capabilities of Pytorch are available, like Pytorch 
there are many more like as, as i said that for uh, deep learning we have raster vision and uh, uh, torch geo then it's a cloud support like all all major cloud service uh, uh, a platform they are supporting pytorch so this is one of the basic uh, these are some terms we will be using quite frequently one what we call classification so the classification this classification the classification uh, term used in parallels of deep learning is slightly different from the uh, in uh, the what the people in remote sensing domain say for classification so in uh, case of class in, in case of deep learning classifications mean like suppose this is an image and if this particular image contains a dog or dog image or cat's image so that what we say in parallels of deep learning a uh, classification so the say uh, like so classification is like whether this particular image contains a dog or not in matter of where it is so that what we call classification so then when we are when we are locating that particular object in an image maybe cat or dog so that we call object detection so classification is just like whether this is an image of cat or dog is there a cat or dog in that image or not when we localize that object what we are looking for right so that what we call object detection so like drawing a bond bonding box around that so <coughs> then then the term term comes segmentation so in the so when we actually for every pixel if, if we tell that if that pixel if this particular pixel belongs to that object or not so that what we call segmentation like here you can say only the pixels which are belonging to that image that dog are in red right so this is what we call segmentation but this what we call uh, classification in uh, uh, image uh, sorry remote sensing parallels so today we will be using this classification not the classification in terms of what we call uh, what uh, remote sensing community says so we will be doing a classification what deep learning community says like so we will try to identify different land land use or land cover patterns in our satellite image so we will be using one i will be explaining as we go so for this as i said that you must have some basic understanding of uh, python so uh, pytorch is as i said is one of the most popular framework for using deep learning so if you go to google colab and log in with your uh, credentials by default torch come pytorch or torch comes installed to that and plus it gives you access to gpu as well so if i say i'll connect and start i have taken much more time than what i thought i will taking on the lecture so now anyway i'll go a bit fast on the code pattern so i'll be just explaining uh, so first thing once you installed pytorch so you need to import that so torch is the name of the package and numpy so equivalent to numpy there are uh, tensors tensors in num uh, deep learning terminology so uh, tensors are similar to numpy's nd arrays except that these tensors run on gpu or hardware accelerators so numpy arrays are not designed for running on the gpus where parallel uh, processing takes place so uh, like you can say that uh, tensors are equivalent of numpy arrays which can run on gpus right so uh, uh, so th these uh, tensors are uh, multi dimensional arrays so how do we create so all images all uh, uh, objects or images whatever you are represented at tensors in deep learning so anything any data what you are going to use uh, for deep learning are represented as as tensors so as i said the tensors are as uh, uh, numpy arrays so like this is a numpy array i am creating a two dimensional numpy array suppose if i want to convert this numpy array to tensor then i can just call torch dot tensor and pass it the data for which which i want to create a tensor and so if i just run x underscore data so it says that this is a tensor of like this is quite people who are know numpy already so numpy arrays and tensors are they have or they offer all similar functionality but uh, difference is they and uh, tensors are not gpus so similar way suppose if you want to create a tensor from a numpy array you can just call torch dot from numpy uh, torch dot from numpy and pass it your numpy array it creates an tensor from a numpy array so numpy arrays are the sorry tensors are the basic building blocks of a neural network not not neural network actually are yeah, well well we use uh, actually entire day for representing the data these are the 
building blocks for representing the data. So building block of the uh, neural network is a neuron. So for this, I'll be using another library. As I said, that Torch Geo actually the data set available is not uh, by default is not available in uh, uh, PyTorch. Uh, so the data set which I'll be using is available in Torch Geo. So because of that, I am just installing the Torch Geo. So as I said that uh, let it get installed. So basic uh, building block of uh, 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 data is tensor. So all data which you want to use in a neural network must be in the form of tensors. And so uh, there are the different utilities, uh, utilities available in the PyTorch for handling this data. So PyTorch has two primitives to work with data. One, two primitives, one is called data loader and another is called data set. So data set stores basic uh, samples and corresponding labels. So like every image and its corresponding uh, sam uh, label will be stored in and, and all these samples will be stored in something called data set. So but while training the neural network, we need to make the group or batches from this data set. Like if uh, there is something called mini batch gradient descent. So like for training the neural network, we need to group these individual images or their levels into groups together. So data loader helps us in creating uh, groups or batches of the batches from this data set. So these are two basic primitives. One will one which is called data set. So data set will be your actual image and its label. And the data loader will help will help us in grouping these data sets together. So now this uh, torch you got installed. So I need to just restart. So for using this, you need to just import like import torch. So torch is our is our base package base package, and from torch we are importing another package called nn. So nn is the package for implementing neural networks. Then data loader data loader is available inside torch.utils.data, and torch vision data set actually we don't need anyway just import. And if you want to convert some data sets, so for this particular demonstration, I will be using a data set called Eurosat. So I'll be uh, <coughs> talking about this in detail. So like if you click here, it shows the detail about this. Right. So now first thing, you need to import all these packages. <coughs> so now as I said that these all Eurosat is a data set. <coughs> so I will talk in this. Now suppose now if you want to download this data set, so this data set is available in Torch Geo, sorry Torch Geo. So I'll just create an object of this training data equal to Eurosat 100. So this data set contains only 100 images. So and that is splitted in uh, to training, validation, and test data sets. Right. So I am telling root equal to data to store this data into the uh, data directory, and I just I want to just download the train uh, training images like uh, Eurosat contains some multiple images, some of that images are marked for training, some are marked for validation and some are marked for testing. So I am just, by this I am just downloading the images which are marked for, as training images. So if I just do this training data, so it is downloading those data from the, and now similar way I am validation data set I am just downloading for validation. So this is the description of Eurosat data set. So what does this Eurosat data set contains? So Euro, uh, Eurosat data set is based on Sentinel-2 images covering 13 spectral bands. So these all images, whatever are available in this particular data set, these are the images of Sentinel-2 spacecraft. And these has all 13 spectral bands which we get with. And with this every image we have 10 target classes or what we call the classification of, of that image, whether this particular image, what this image represents, whether it's, it represents an highway, a highway, or a green pasture or a forested area or something like like so this is not the classification uh, this is not the classification what we what people in remote sensing community say this is classification in terms of deep learning community right so these the Eurosat data set contains a uh, sentinel two images of 64 by 64 by 64 64 uh, of the size 64 by 64 and they have all 13 spectral bands and label is the land use pattern of that particular image like whether this is a highway 
or this is an industrial building or residential area or something like not the classification in terms of what remote sensing community says right <coughs> so this has uh, this we have uh, 164 by 64 64 cross 64 images the 13 bands you will see and visualize these images so these are the uh, land cover classes we say annual crop forest vegetation highway industrial building pasture permanent crop or whatever right <coughs> so this is what just i have just because uh, in image as i said that either image or label will be represented as tensor so tensors are numeric values right so these uh, labels of every image is stored at a number from 0 to 9 so just for showing like zero number is means if, if there is if with image the label attached is zero so that is what we call annual crop one may be forest this is this, this is the label attached to that so i have just created a dictionary which maps from the uh, numeric tensor to its textual representation what does it right so <coughs> i'll be using a mat plotly for doing this now actually now we can see that we have downloaded the data set right so training data is our data set which contains all images like if i see the training data set dot shape or well say training so actually this is not it will not give me the shape training data zero So now you can say that, uh, like tr this, all training data are represented as an image of 64 by 64 plus 33. So 13 bands are available, right? So now suppose let's visualize these images. Like some random images we will take. Our data set contains, like if I say, len of data set. Sorry, training data. So sixty. So sir, there are sixty images of this, like sixteen to thirty-four, thirty percent. Now suppose let's visualize few of these images. So this is the part of matplotlib. Anyway, is not important for this. So what here? Here I am doing just I am creating uh, a three by three, three rows and three columns, and I am iterating over this, and just I am generating some random number out of these sixty. I am just picking up some random numbers and plotting them. Right. So if we see these images and attaching that label to that, if we see, so this how how does our Training data looks like, right? So this is an image, and label attached to that image is forest. So actually, I just I have taken a single band, some of the band from that. Like this is an image, and this is classified as highway, right? So this is also classified as highway, highway. This is permanent crop, forest, sea, and lake. So this is our training data contains image of 64 by 64 uh, size and 13 bands, and a label associated to that image. Like what is it is that is also in the form of numerals zero one two three or whatever right so suppose if similar these images because there are thirteen bands out of three bands suppose if you want to create a false color composite or standard false color so this is how these images look like in a false color composite right so this is a bit clear like it this is industrial building you can say quite clearly and this is highway and these are some these are also classified as industrial building and this is a river. Right, so this all training data looks like this image and its associated label. So image is stored in tensor form, label also is stored in uh, at tensor form. Right now, the second thing I call I said that this because this data set contains all hundred images. Right now, for training a neural network, we need to group them in batches. Right, so for that there is a function, uh, a utility called data loader. Right, so for Every data set I am creating a da data loader, which I am passing the argument like training data or like my data set, which needs to be grouped together and batch size. So what should be my mini batch size, like four images to be together. And if I want to do shuffling on that, then I can do shuffling. So I have now created two data loaders. One is for training data loader, and another is test data loader. Right, and now if I iterate over this, now it, it says that now you can say that our batch contains four images, right? Four images and four labels. Now, if I inspect the sizes of these, it says the size of 
इमेज इज फोर क्रॉस थर्टीन क्रॉस सिक्सटी फोर क्रॉस सिक्सटी फोर फोर इमेज इज थर्टीन बैंड और थर्टीन चैनल इन एवरी इमेज एंड द इमेज साइज ऑफ सिक्सटी फोर बाई सिक्सटी फोर एंड देर आर फोर लेबल अटैच टू एवरी इमेज एट फॉर इन केस ऑफ सुपरवाइज लर्निंग वी नीड इमेज एज वेल एज इट्स अटैच लेबल नाउ लेट सी हाउ डू वी बिल्ड अ मॉडल टू डिफाइन अ न्यूरल नेटवर्क इन पाई टॉर्च वी क्रिएट अ क्लास दैट इनहेरिट्स फ्रॉम द एन एन सो एन एन इज अवर एन एन विल बी अवर बेस क्लास एन एन सो वेन एवर वी आर क्रिएटिंग अ न्यू मॉडल वी नीड टू इनहेरिट और इनहेरिट दिस एन एन मॉडल सो वी डिफाइन द लेयर्स ऑफ नेटवर्क इन साइड द इनिट फंक्शन एंड स्पेसिफाई हाउ डेटा विल पास थ्रू द नेटवर्क इन द फॉरवर्ड फंक्शन सो यू विल बी फॉर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग अ न्यूरल नेटवर्क वी फर्स्ट नीड टू inherit an n an n class and inside that we need to write a function called forward in that we will specify how the data should be flow in the, our side so suppose if you want to use gpu right so it is quite simple uh, because now right now i am using t4 gpu available with uh, so there is like if you can use a very you can store a, like you can just say tors dot cuda available you can just query if cuda if cuda is available in your system then you can use gpu for processing otherwise you can just use cpu so here i am creating a variable called device in that if cuda is available i will be in the device i will be using device i am storing value cuda otherwise cpu so because now i have used gpu is available to me say that using cuda device so i the whatever model we will be training or running it will be running on the gpu and this is how do we define a neural network in pytorch so first thing i am creating my model so for the model as first thing i what i said that we need to first import nn so nn dot module we need to import uh, extend actually or inherit uh, from the nn nn dot module model so this is inheriting nn dot module and inside that we are defining the constructor uh, init constructor and inside that this is the calling it super class constructor so first layer hum what i am adding here self flatten lap right so as i said that our image now is a three dimensional image right so first thing as i said that neural network we need to convert into a single dimension so this nn dot flatten layer converts our uh, two or three dimensional image to a one dimensional uh, set of inputs right so then now here we are creating a set of layers so first layer we are calling here a uh, fully linear layers linear nn dot linear is a fully connected layer so to, to this nn dot linear we need to specify two parameters one is number of inputs and another k is number of outputs right so in our case our image we just wanted to pass every image to our neural network right so our image is of size 64 by 64 and there are 13 channels so if we flatten it so how many pixels will be there in our every image or what if every pixel or uh, values in all bands if you say call a feature right so every every pixel has now we can say uh, uh, 13 features we can say now there are but uh, there are 64 by 64 pixel in every image so right so the input input layer will have so these many input num parameter like 64 64 multiplied by 13 so these many input features will be there to our layer and these in our first hidden layer we want to have 500 and 12 neurons right so right so so as, as this is the size of input and this is the output so this is the size of input and this will be producing 5 12 outputs then we are applying an a relu activation function to the every neuron right so then again we are creating an another hidden layer that has now these 5 12 inputs because we are creating fully connected layer these 5 12 input layers will go as input to the next layer 5 12 and from this we are producing 128 so now there will be a third hidden layer with 128 input layers then uh, sorry neurons then we have connected a uh, uh, activation function relu activation function to this then again these 128 inputs are going to another layer which has 32 inputs then again uh, activation function and finally we are connecting these to 10 outputs right because we wanted to predict uh, 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 like uh, to classify these uh, images to one of these 10 classes so if you are just doing binary classification you can do one or two 
Now, depending on how many classes you want to classify your data into, so you can uh, choose that how many output layers should be there. Like right here, we are producing finally ten outputs. So this is the architecture of our neural network. So it has you can say one, two, three, and four, four hidden layers, and finally, uh, finally one output layer. So in the neural network, we need to specify one something called forward function in so uh, dev forward. So first anyway self. And this input will go to this. So whatever input while training, this input goes to the first. The forward function gets called automatically. So first thing, what like now here we will specify how the data should be passed to these layers. So first, whatever input uh, comes to the neural net uh, to our model. So first, it should be go to the flatten layer. So whatever input is coming, first it will be flattened out by this flatten layer, right? So then, self dot linear relu state. Now next. This x, whatever after flattening in, this x goes to this relu stack, relu stack where there are multiple layers. So finally, this will be producing an output. So whatever it is producing, we will be storing in the variable lagits, and this forward function returns lagits. So logits, sorry. So then, this way we build our model, right? So once the this is the framework of our model. Now <coughs> we need to create an object of this. So this is we have just defined a class. Right, so now by calling neural network, we create an instance of this class or an object of this class. And if you call this dot two, so if you have already available to GPU, we are transferring it to the GPU. If there is CPU, then it will run on the CPU. So now if I see model, I have not run this step. So here I have created a model. Now if I just inspect this, I say. model so this you can see that this is the input like these are the this is the structure of our model so first is a linear layer which has 5 2 3 2 4 input features right so these are all our 64 by 64 pixels in our image so those all are using being used as a features then this has 5 12 outputs then the next layer these 5 12 which go as input to the next layer and it is producing 128 outputs 128 going 32 32 finally 10 Outputs are there in our level. So uh, next, we need to specify a loss function, right? So how our neural network check the quality of the output produced by the model, right? So there are different uh, loss functions for that. So generally, for classification, we generally use a function called cross entropy loss. Right? So first, we need to specify the function. And then dot like here we are using uh, cross entropy loss. Suppose if you are doing a regression, you can use MAE or MSE also uh, as a loss function for uh, training your neural network. Then there is something called optimizer. So optimizer is what will be updating the values of weights and biases based on for opti like uh, the uh, optimizer will be uh, uh, manipulating the values of weight uh, weights and biases of the Uh, different neurons based on for optimizing the loss value right so this this is like how do we create an optimizer law torch dot optim dot here we are creating an uh, <coughs> gradient or sgd stochastic gradient uh, descent optimizer so here we need to pass in the parameters like model dot pa models parameters of the model by calling model dot parameters in another argument called learning rate how fast or slow the model must learn or change the weights right so once we have created first we have created the model then we specified our loss function and optimizer for this model now we need to train the model so for that we have written here a train function right so to the train function we are uh, just passing the data loader right so the data loader which has batched our inputs into the batches and the model on which it should be trained a loss function and an optimizer right so first here i am just calculating size So first thing for training the model, you need to call the function called model dot train. So once uh, by this switch, model is into the so here it will be tracking the gradients. So model dot train. So now we'll be now our whole training data set is broken into the batches. Now we'll be iterating over all over those batches one by one. And so with the enumerator, enumerator, we are just. Uh, batching over uh, all the image sets so like image data and image so this is our actual like in the image data 
actually this is uh, we have specifically used the data set of torch geo so it stores it as a dictionary which has two keys one is image and another is label so image 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 key contains the images and label key contains the labels so i am just fetching the images and storing them in the x variable and fetching the labels and storing them in the y variable now because these are existing in the cpu we need to transfer them to the gpu because our model has been transferred to the gpu so like by calling x dot 2 and passing on the name of device where you want to you can we are transferring it to the gpu right now we have just fetched the our data and its associated label right now initially at the first time uh, uh, all our uh, weights and biases of all all our neurons will be have some random values right so with the random value first what we are doing first we are passing on whatever input images we have and it will produce some output with those weights and biases those random weights and biases right so then it will produce some prediction it is generating some prediction now now here we are comparing this the output <coughs> produced by the model with the actual output right so that with the help of loss function we are quantifying how <coughs> how our uh, prediction differs from the actual values of that land class right so with the loss with the help of loss to the loss function we are passing the predicted value and the actual value and we are quanti quantifying the a uh, difference between their values right so then uh, once this is done once we have quantified now we need to calculate the gradient so that like how to uh, how how much the weight and biases should be updated so for that if you call loss dot dot backward so in this case the neural network uh, uh, back propagation <coughs> will be done and new biases <coughs> like uh, new biases and uh, uh, weights will be calculated on that right so if you call optimizer dot step so then it will update the weights and biases by the optimizer then actually after that we need to zero the gradients right so this is the model like the, then this loop keeps on going right so in the, like this uh, after this we have calculated the loss so based on this loss the optimizer will decide how much uh, uh, for each neuron what uh, how is, how its weight and bias must be updated by the optimizer dot in the optimizer dot step function those weights and biases will be changed right so then it goes to the then we go to the next training set again the same process will be followed right so this way this loop will keep on going until we iterate over all the uh, data in our data set so right then the next time now we we expect that the loss to be uh, because weights and biases because we are updating the weights and biases for the for minimizing the loss so this way we will keep on repeating this to the number of times we have specified the number of epochs right this is the training loop how the neural network gets trained so once a neural network gets trained we need to test it for the data which we, it has never seen right because anyway training loss will be keep, uh, keep on coming down so now finally this is a testing loop is uh, similar to our training loop only thing the difference is there before calling that uh, there it was model dot train now we need to call model dot eval so in that case it doesn't keep track of gradients and the same thing is here we need to call with with torch dot no grad so in, in that case it doesn't keep track of gradients because now here we are in the testing loop we are not uh, updating the weights and biases we are just producing we are just giving the input data and uh, getting the inference from the model and we are comparing that just with the actual outputs we are not updating here weights and biases so here we are not tracking the gradient so with torch dot no no grad and the steps are almost same only and only here we are just comparing the predictions made by the model to the actual prediction so that gives us the, the little, uh, about the accuracy of our model right so anyway this is the same step now suppose if i want to train this particular model for 10 number of epochs right one epoch means a epoch means when the entire data set is scanned for at least once so one like if our model in the training mode phase if our model like has scanned over all the data sets uh, all the samples in our data sets that what we call one epoch is completed 
like all batches have gone through the cycle then we call an epoch so like for this then we will keep on <coughs> training for the different uh, number of epochs so here i am training the model for 10 number of epochs you can change right so first in the first epoch first we are training the model for like in one epoch train for the entire data set then test or what you can say here validate actually basically so train then test then again in the second epoch and third epoch like this we can go and we expect that the loss will be coming down over every epoch now suppose if i run this so oh, actually i have not run these steps so now you can say that the accuracy of our model slightly increasing 10 to 15% it has gone right but it is it is stable to like here you can see that the loss is coming down with the every training step right so initially the loss was when first batch was given for training the loss was 130 126 but in the second it increase 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 but once the training gets stabilized you can say somewhere here the training got stabilized and now the <coughs> loss is getting reduced and the accuracy on the test data also is slightly increase accuracy it has not become stable like if we uh, because the uh, whatever model we have made is just a toy model it may not be suitable for the data set which we have right but we can say slightly that the accuracy is increasing and the loss also is increase like loss accuracy also is fluctuating between 10 15 to 20 because our training uh, our network also is not so powerful as of now so like this this is an this is just for a tutorial this way we can build and train our neural network so our objective is here is to minimize so the accuracy what so the loss must be similar on both training set as well as testing set now here we can see that <coughs> for this particular data set the like where if we see the loss is more on the training but it should is greater than not but here almost both are similar so with this we can say that the model is not overfit because the losses on training set and uh, the test is are also similar so similar in the similar range so we they can say that the model is not overfit like right? so now after 10 epochs we can say that the model is up to say 15% every on average it's 15% accurate right so if we uh, make the or give it more training samples or if we train it for more number of epochs the we expect the accuracy to increase now let us see how do we use this particular one of the model is trained so model is trained means it has it has selected the <coughs> best weights and biases for all neurons to get the to approximate the <coughs> function or for the minimum loss or like uh, to approximate the input features to the output right so <clears throat> now we can say the model is trained means all biases and uh, weights have been uh, calculated to do their best value to for getting the minimum loss or maximum accuracy anyway accuracy of the model is right now the model is trained now all weights and biases are uh, calculated and now even you can save this or this model you can use for prediction like so the prediction you can use the similar way like model and if you pass it a new value it makes a prediction for that now suppose if we take a random sample from our training set and see because the model is 15% or 10% accurate only we may say that out of 10 images it may just uh, predict only one image correctly right so we are now here what i have done i have just i have taken a sem uh, random image uh, i have sampled as a random image from the test data set and predicting and uh, features of that we are giving to the model and seeing that what the model is predicting right so actually we have given the industrial building as input to the model but it has produced the river because the accuracy was quite poor but if you say for the next time so if i run next time it has shown river as river right now let us see with image it is instead of that i have actual image so now you can say actual was permanent crop but it has predicted as a river now if i run for the second time for some under random random image so pasture it is showing as river now vegetation it has so none of the image i could get correctly 
classified. At least one I hope to get correctly. No. No. So anyway, uh, here at least I got one uh, river for river, but when I'm giving some more images, it is not able to predict. So, but because the accuracy of the model is quite poor, so this way we can see that how can we build a model and test the model using PyTorch. So similar way, because uh, uh, generally for image classification tasks we use uh, neural networks. So then actually because now time is not available, so then similar way we can. A similar way we can use implement CNNs whatever architecture we have seen here. So for that we have this convolution layer. So with the help of convolution layer we can build a, a convolution neural network which basically can be we can use for neural network. So similar way so this is one some old run of this. Um, so suppose if I want to build a neural network of this uh, size, so like I can create like this. So uh, while specifying a neural network you need to specify these three parameters right so one is first is your number of input channels so you can say here or first convolution layer has is getting 13 input channels the uh, image of, uh, let be the image size of image be anything then it is producing six feature maps right <coughs> so it, it gets 13 uh, channels as image input and it produces six feature maps like it is trying to learn six match so first neural uh, uh, convolution layer is trying to learn six features and it is using a kernel of size five by five right so first convolution layer then there is a uh, max pooling layer i think it was discussed as discussed in the convolution layer uh, cnn lecture so now as i said that all popular cnn architectures are like first we give the entire image and less number of uh, feature maps it generates then we reduce the dimension so right so here now we are max pooling or we are uh, reducing the spatial dimension by two then in the second layer now these it has generated six feature maps those six feature maps are going as input to the next layer and it is producing 16 feature maps right so now we have reduced the spatial dimension and increased the uh, feature maps then kernel size is same and now next these <coughs> Then we may uh, further reduce the spatial dimensions, and now we have again another convolution which will be getting these six, 16 feature maps, and it will be producing 120 feature maps, right? From 60 to 120, and it is also using the same kernel of 5 by 5 size. Now finally we have these fully connected layers. Now let us see how this particular network works. This also may perform similar way only. Now the uh, the training functions are um, functions are same, and our loss function everything is same. So this is our architecture of our and thing. And suppose if I if I wish to train it for me, it just ten box. So the accuracy of this also is in similar range, ten to fifteen percent. So what is required here now? We need to improve our architecture of our model to get better results. So let us see if it produces something. No, this is also producing quite wrong results. So here, a CNN also could not work. So at least one image, I think, sea or lake, I could get it correctly, right? So this accuracy was uh, 10 or 15 percent only. So this way we can implement basic, uh, basic neural net, uh, deep neural networks or convolution neural networks using PyTorch. So this was. <coughs> my all about my all in this lecture so with this we come to the end of this lecture if you have any questions you can pose it on the uh, chat box and we will try to break so thank you very much